Deep in the ocean, an orca pod is on the hunt. But these aren't your average orcas. These guys are organized. Marketing team, did you get those social media posts scheduled for the seal migration? Aye, aye, Captain. We even have an automated notification for all pod managers when they go live. They use Monday.com to keep their teamwork sharp, their communication clear, and their goals in sight. Monday.com. For whatever you run, even orcas, go to Monday.com to dive deeper. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring her out. The star attraction, the one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. Um, tell the story about, how about how I just feel like I have a little toy here. <laughs> tell the story <laughs> about, um, uh, about the corporate gig where the guy, you got Heckling? a letter. Yeah, the letter you got. The letter. Oh, uh, yeah. I did that uh, corporate with Larry Miller and the people were drunk and horrific during the entire show. and. Mm-hmm. I literally got a letter that some his manager made him send to me apologizing. It's great. It's in the book. The book, of course, How yes. to Succeed in Business Without Worry Crying. It's the greatest letter because you know he felt like such shit. I yeah. can't believe you cut you uh, crossed his name out. All right. Um, <laughs> Probably for legal reasons. <laughs> now, you're going on the road and, you know, you you talk about women and and this is a com the topic that comes up all the time about women in comedy women in comedy women and i never sort of played the woman card i think because i had mentors like you and you know that it was like i just want to be a good comic so you know it's really about i think it's harder for women in every profession except for like maybe teaching or nursing you know we yeah. have right but i never was like i don't get this now i say it now i know i don't get things because i'm an older woman but um you know i never played that uh you know it's so woe is me and you never you actually took it to the other end of the earth here and said no it's better because there's less of us yeah um and we're we're we have different things to say yeah and what i think hasn't changed since when I was doing it, excuse me, when you were doing it, is that, you know, now when I see shows, now there's a bit of a conscience about, you know, all men going on a show. It's like, right. uh, you can't do that. Right. <laughs> you know, we also have to be represented just because women kind of like spark up when there's a woman on the show. Right, right. It's like, oh, uh, and I don't mean that to say, we're just, am I right, ladies? Just dealing right. with them. But it's important to make a show balanced like the world is balanced. Right, right. Um, so it's always bugged me when, um, you know, there were still lineups on at comedy clubs where it's all men. It's like, you know, have a, or, or all white men. But it's know? still like, I mean, I, it, I was looking um, online the other day, or I saw some post post somewhere about, uh, and it was for a comedy show called Girls on Girls, and I was just like, why can't it just be a comedy show? Uh huh. You know, it's like when there's three guys on a comedy show, it's a comedy show. Yeah. When it's three women, it's Ladies Night Out or Hysterical, and it's just mm-hmm. like I refuse to do any show that has a, a demeaning name for a woman in the title. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Right. Because it's not girls on girls. It's just people doing stand-up con- You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only good thing I think about now, and I wrote about in my book, is that, you know, I'm sure, Judy, you remember from those days, they wouldn't put two women uh, one following after, each Right, other. All, all the time. Yeah, it was like, we got to break it up. Right, it was like, oh, well, I have a woman on that show. I remember calling clubs, um, you know, because I used to get up in the morning Hi, is this Joey Novick? Hi. Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember people saying, oh, we had a woman here like two months ago. She didn't <laughs> yeah, do well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, right. I'm like, oh, did you have, ever have a white guy that didn't do well? They used to not put two black people on yeah. one after another either. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, just because of the time, it was, uh, it was so dominated by white straight guys. 
Um, you went on the road. A lot of, um, and I, I did too. I know that the, when I started out. Oh, the, what? I wanted to tell you that. I didn't want to forget that your great piece that you wrote in the New York Times, I've quoted that a lot because your thing about saying that on the road, going to a comics hotel room was very normal. Right. It didn't mm -hmm. mean like code for, oh, come sleep with me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so, it was like, that's our home. Yes. That's yeah. I, when people were like, why'd they go to the hotel room? That really pissed me off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it also so pissed. Sorry to interrupt, but I no, I tell love you. that. I got a compliment <laughs> from Carol Leaf, ladies and gentlemen. Compliment from Carol Leaf. Uh, <laughs> two compliment from Carol Leaf. <laughs> um, when you uh, you talked about and was the bane of my existence, comedy condos, and you yes. have the funniest story. Um, so a lot of people don't know that when the club owners realized, oh, I could just buy a crappy apartment or rent a crappy apartment and throw the comics in there instead of playing for three hotel rooms. Right. Uh, and could give a shit like how comfortable we are, how clean it was or anything like that. But they realized, oh, this is a much, you know, this is going to reap me a lot more money. Yeah. So you get a gig on the road with Sue Kalinske, who was a, who was a past guest who I love. Yes. Uh, and which is like amazing in in its in and of itself. Oh, that we got to work together. Right. Yeah. And a friend. Right. Yeah. And it was in Arizona and we get to the comedy condo and it's probably about one or two o'clock. And, you know, the guy is there and. The, um, yeah, because you'd walk in there always yeah, be a comic. Somebody in there. there yeah. You take this room. You take this room, and then I'm sure we. I think there was a pool. We hung out by the pool, right. we're swimming, and blah blah blah. Then we start to get ready for the show. So about seven o'clock, we start to gather near the door to get ready to go to the gig. And Sue and I are ready, and we say to the guy, "Hey, okay, we're ready to go to the club." And he comes out of his room and he goes, "What do you mean?" I go, "It's seven o'clock. We get ready for the eight o'clock show." He's like. Oh, I'm not a comic. I just live here. <laughs> <laughs> so these scuzz bags <laughs> threw us uh, into a condo with a strange man we did not know. <laughs> I it like I read that and was like, it's so typical. Yeah, I like know. not even thinking. Oh, what if he's a rapist? You know, <sighs> right? Yeah. Did you always, in the comedy condos, like it was always like the headliner got the best room, then the middle act got the next room. And right, then, yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you always got the decent room. Um, God, it's such a blur now. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I, I feel like if I really thought about it, I could go into a clinical depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't have cell phones or anything. It was so lonely on the road. You know, and it was really fortunate because I was so tired of these condos but I couldn't you know just it was the way I was making my living these comedy clubs and then I remember this was around 1993 I got five corporate dates for Intel at no five way. grand a piece. No. Yeah which even today is not horrible. I know that's good. <laughs> yeah. I was reading your book and you were talking about like gigs you got in the 80s late 80s and and uh, the money and I was like oh that's what I make now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. You're doing great, Judy. <laughs> um, no, but and then I said to myself when I got those Intel gigs, and it was also in 1993, like, who right. the hell is Intel? Right. You know, but um, it was like, all right, now I'm officially with that buffer right. cushion. I'm not, I'm, I will turn down any comedy condo gig. Right. It's so great when you can say no. I know. 1989. You, yes. um, <laughs> you had a crappy guy who you call Shecky. Right. Who is booking you on shitty gigs, mm -hmm. but promising you everything. Everything. And um, you have, you got it. All right. Can you take it from there? Absolutely. Do I want to know who Shecky is. Do I know who Shecky no, is? No, I'll tell you off the air. All right. Okay. I'll tell you off the air. Cause I just saw him recently. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's a very successful guy. And yeah, okay. he is Jewish. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was promised the world by this agent who said to me, come to my office. How many he, Letterman's have you done by this time? Um, well, well by then, it, it probably. It was 89, right? 15. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 20 maybe even. And mm. he said, bring me a list of all the gigs you've done and how much you made, and we'll go over it. 
and we brought him the list, and he'd go through everything, and it was like, you got that for giggles? <laughs> Get you double that. You got that for <laughs> ho-hos, you know? Yeah. And um, so I decided to sign with him. So, and like, they And you had to sign papers then. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I remember that. I don't sign with anyone. And then it was uh, three weeks in, three months in, nothing. The gig's horrible. Literally booking me on the Jersey Turnpike at... They're not, I don't think they exist anymore. The ground, ground rounds. rounds I remember those. Yeah. There was people, one in New Brunswick. Oh my yes. God. Eating peanuts and throwing the shells on the floor. And Did then, you ever do the Penny Arcade? Yes, I did do That's, that. That was my hometown. Oh my and God. And I would never work there because they were all so mean to me. So I never went back there. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, a couple months into it, I'm like, Shecky, you promised me the world and I'm playing all these dumps. Like, what's going on? He's like, Look, I'm working on you opening for Frank. And I'm like, like Frank who? Frank Stallone? Because I don't know, uh, you know, what you're promising. He was like, no, no, Frank Sinatra. And I thought, this guy is out of his mind. I mean, he's got me on the turnpike. No, but he's working on me opening for Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and then I worked on a cruise ship. And another gig I got for myself and then I get a phone call. Did you go by yourself ship. to the cruise no, ship? No, I think maybe even Sue Kalinsky came with me as my guest. <laughs> and um, I got a phone call. And if you got a phone call on a cruise then, yeah. it was like either one of your parents died or your apartment went on fire. Right, but they in that, they would make right, it an right, announcement. Right, paging, yeah. yes. And I get on the phone, and it's Shecky, and he's like, you got the date in Vegas with Frank Sinatra. He got me to open for Frank Sinatra. He had some weird line to Jilly Rizzo, who was Frank Sinatra's manager, and I opened, all because of him, I got to open for Frank Sinatra. Now, you write about Frank um, as being, first of all, the fact that you, when the first time you met him, he was in his boxer shorts and yes. his tux. <laughs> yeah. Like, now... He, it would be me too, and right. he would, you know what I, I mean? I know, that's so true, I never thought about that. Yeah. And then also, I forgot that detail. Uh, I don't know what, men had like their socks on suspenders Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell was that? <laughs> but you... Um, they didn't stay up, it no, was like... No. Uh, and you show in the book, The Marquee. Yeah. And it's funny, because Catch a Rising Star is right in that, I, I remember I brought right. my parents there, that was like one of the last times my father ever saw me before, but you know, in the marquee, it has Frank Sinatra, and in prominent letters, Carol Leifer. Yes. And you write that most, like headliners in Vegas, would not share the marquee like that's that. That's right, that's right. Mm. I joke around that Bill Maher opened for a big star and she would not put his name on the marquee. And mm. her name rhymes her with talent. Tiana Toss. <laughs> 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 there you go. Oh, I'll never guess that. Yeah, Brianna Moss. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, so and the Boobeams. He was yeah. very gracious. <laughs> 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 and he would... Um, Always introduced the songwriter when I sing, which I thought was, I, I mean, to this day, it remains Ooh. the greatest. I know. That's what I love. Gig I could ever talk about. And also to my, to my parents, you know, for my, my parents, your parents, their generation to yeah. open for Frank Sinatra. I mean, it's just, Can, I can't even, I mean, were your parents like, hi, Carol's opening for Frank Sinatra. Would they like that at all? They weren't, they didn't have that kind of. Yeah, mine didn't yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. They weren't showy right, that way. Right, same. Yeah. yeah, but I, I my, think it's that generation, mm -hmm. you know, Yeah, like that. I, I kind of, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't realize my parents were really old until, you know, I realized how old, like, you know, they lied all the time. So, and my father, I told the story, right? My father's um, 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole day, I'm like, you're a half a century, oh, yeah. you're a half a century, you're a half, and then I realized he was 60, they had lied to me. Uh -huh. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, and then my grandmother's 75th birthday, I was really young, and I was like, Gran Granny, you're so old, you know, because 75 then was yeah. like, and she goes, no, I'm, it's, we're joking, I'm really 57, it's just a joke, you know, like it's opposite, so right. then, and then I found my grandmother's, um, I don't know, she had something that said date of birth, like a prescription on her kitchen table. Uh -huh. And it said 96. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was like 1970. 
96 or 77 and i go 96 uh, how was she born in the future <laughs> and then i was like oh my god she was born in 18 like i couldn't Whoa. you know um okay so do you, you you when do you move to la i moved to la I know, but we're going to be fine. Um, Carol moved, looked at her watch, but I have too much. I can't. I, I've been dying for this for years. Well, okay. while, while people are yawning and talking about um, transitions and whatnot, I'm going to go to my rehearsal that I have. And this uh, has oh, been great. More um, than Hennessy an honor. has to leave. I'm to really go to his, sorry. Uh, okay. I don't know if you remember that I told you about this. Yeah. He told this you about This has it. been like truly, truly, you are. Um, I mean, you're just wonderful. I have loved getting to hear you share your stories. Thank you. you are a legend, and I've loved you since I was a little kid. And wow. Yeah, you very much uh, impacted me as a performer, you know, and a character actor. I would love to see you do drama. I bet you fucking kill it. <laughs> no, yes, I do not. <laughs> I bet you do. Um, you're so sweet, but no, that's not in my wheelhouse. <sighs> God, the funny ones always do such good drama. All right, good. You're done. <laughs> okay. All right, have a good. What's this rehearsal Thank for? Thank you again. Um, it is for uh, a reading I'm doing in a couple days. Is it uh, a guy? You're playing a man? Or trans? What are you playing? Um, who? I, uh, I'm i not really sure actually yet because I haven't read the script. Uh, no, I'm playing a Oh, that's sister. good. You did your homework. That's great. <laughs> All yeah. right. Uh, well, they just sent it to me today. All right, that's good. Enjoy that fake mustache. All right, um, you. I'm telling you, if you shave it, it'll grow in better. Um, I'm documenting things right now, though. Okay. Yeah. Hennessy's transitioning and yeah. um, documenting the whole. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. With that stupid mustache. Judy likes to... I like to torture Very him. good haircut. I know. Thank you. I, I do myself. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I met him when he was girly. Mm. Really? Yes. Girly. You had, you were like, you know, you'd wear Was makeup. Ever girly old no, I mean, you, I'm not you gonna were not girly. Chick. No, you had long hair yeah, and you right. had. Was a cutie. Whatever. All right, bye. Bye. Thank Have you. fun. Thank you. So okay. funny. My wife, Lori, is very, she's beautiful, but she is very butch in that. Like, I can never buy her a woman's blouse. Right, or, right, right. You know, that kind of stuff. She gets like, fuck, no, I'm not going to wear that. I love that. I'm. I, I don't. Know. I like being a girl a little bit, but I'm. Yeah. I'm kind of. I'm half and half. I think. Half and half. Yeah, I'm half butch and half. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, all right. So you moved to L.A. And what's your first writing job? My first writing job was SNL. Oh, but that's that was right. In New York. Yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, I, uh, you talked about seeing Al Franken uh, mm -hmm. audition for SNL. He, was he not? He watched me audition. Oh, okay. He I know was he was the in the people. room. Right. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I at the comic strip. At the comic strip, yeah. he was really instrumental in getting me hired there. So I owe a huge debt. Of, and you were the only woman. I was. Uh, the second half of the season, right? Yes. There was another woman the first half. And was it as torturous as people say writing on that show? It's I mean, not an easy job. Right. It's definitely um, uh, challenging, but uh, it's a great job. And I think if I were a little more committed to writing at that time, I could right. have even done an even better job. I was just frustrated that I was still a performer and not right. performing. Right. I know it's hard to... It's hard to give that up, yeah. sort of. I, I talked about, um, at the time, like 11, you know, 11.15, the band would start at Saturday night, right. and I'd get all jazzed up, and I'm right. like, where are you going? You're, you're, you're backstage. <laughs> Just calm down. Um, do you have feelings about Al Franken as... I do. Um, I do, too. Okay. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. Um, here's the thing about what's challenging for me... Oh, Al Franken, sorry. ...with... Uh, with the movements going on. I like to think I've been around, we've been around a long time, and you feel like you have a sense of someone. Mm -hmm. And Al Franken, and, and so, you know, honestly, we spent a lot of late nights together and, uh, you know, uh, way back when, and I found him to be nothing but a gentleman and nothing but a good, decent, menschy guy. Right. And because he took a picture that was stupid, um, 
it, it didn't bug me. It was like right. he's a comic and he right. wasn't serving men. So what's the problem? And now for someone to lose their entire career over it, their and, political and career. And also what a champion he has been for a women for in women. his yes. job. Yes. And yet this orange piece of crap mm -hmm. who's a philanderer, a money launderer, a predator, a, just a misogynist, dumb, like... Yes. How does he keep his job? He keeps his job. Yeah, it's, it's really infuriating. And I think you know this Me Too movement, which great. I I I don't equate Al Franken and Harvey Weinstein. Like I, there's not right. equal whatsoever. Yeah. But that being said, and I'm not. I'm talking about the Al Frankens and the Louis C.K.s and everyone. You know the amount of time we spend together. Performers mm -hmm. late at night, yes, backstage with no clothes on, changing for for skits or this or that. Yeah, you know, we don't have bound. We have limited boundaries because of the nature of our work. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and we also the nature of being a comic is, you know, sort of going to the edge. Go, you know, like that stupid. You know, like I looked at that photo and I was like, he's not. Molesting her. Yeah. Right. He's doing what any comic we right. know does. Like. Right. Being a bit of a, a you know, a jerk. Right. In the moment. And right. who hasn't done that kind of thing. Right. Um, What's your Al Franken? No, I, I, I'm just saying I, I really, I just can't believe that photo. And I, you know, oh, he did this and he squeezed this one's aunt. I, you know. He also got drummed out by the Democrats. Right. Because they thought, I think that I think Roy was Moore his, was going right. to win, and then they, for whatever reasons, but I've, it's get. I'm getting really annoyed about it. Yeah. it's like have some. We have no ball. The Democrats need to be as play on the same playing field as these people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have no shame. They right. have no, no. Let him. He's a. He's great at his job. You and know? and and like you said, did so much for women, right. pro choice, and always. Um, not someone who just kind of went along with the tide, really right. led the charge. Right. Um, so it's really, you yeah, know, I'm sad. so glad when that piece came out about Aziz and Sorry, yeah. where that New York Times reporter said, you know, you had a bad date. Exactly. You exactly. had a bad date. That's not me you too. Right. That's not time's up. Right. He, he didn't read date. your cues yeah, right. right. He, uh, you know, I talked about that with Henry for a long time, my elder son. Mm -hmm. And he was like, mommy, you know, you're that, you know, once you're aroused, that's all a guy thinks about, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. It, he was, it's, I, I can't, it's so annoying. All right. Anyway. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy to see if you could save when you bundle your home and auto policies. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. So you work, you write for SNL. And then I love, I love, I read about, you know, you writing for Seinfeld. Now, a lot of people don't, I don't know if they all know that you're, no? What? <laughs> that you, Elaine? Okay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Was played by Julia Louis Dreyfus. Too. Yes. All right. Yes. That you wrote on a sitcom, and they hired writers who had never written on a sitcom, basically. Yes, that was that was the real, the real great um, victory of that show. I right. mean, that I was lucky that I'd never written for sitcoms, and that's right. why they hired me. And that they liked hanging out. They always hired people they liked hanging out right. with. It's another thing I talk about in my in book. In the book, yes. You the can hang. be funny. You can write great jokes. But if people don't like being around you, you're not going to get very far. So, like, work on your personality skills. Right. Because people like to hire people they like to be with. Right. <laughs> um, so, that really became, you know, and that was an amazing job. And And because of that job... You really and the fact that they're so inclusive, they were so inclusive with the writers as far as because most sitcoms, you know, you get assigned to. All right. You're going to do episode nine. Go write it. Yeah. And this was really you went in, you would pitch to them, mm -hmm. to Larry and Jerry, Jerry. who shared an office. Yep. And 
it had to be like two sentences two or three sentences yeah, Larry grab would get right like, away bye bye now yes yeah. yes um george brings a deaf woman with him that, to a party to lip read his ex-girlfriend's lips to find out why she broke up with him yes. right and that you got from uh our mutual friend uh uh what's her name deaf uh comic kathy uh, buckley kathy i buckley. heard her on howard yeah. stern and i thought if you had a friend like that yeah would you use them for nefarious right. purposes like <laughs> I that? that i would um the marble rye the marble rye i mm-hmm. mean these are all episodes you know these that you wrote that came from real life um experiences Mm -hmm. uh and really the way you write it's so interesting that you can just two sentences well it was a really good lesson in that when you pitch to people and and you know i'm so complimented that i've gotten so much great feedback about my book not just from people in comedy like i had a guy who was you know he's in um accounting school right you know who really liked the lessons in it but that lesson is also when you get in with your boss like you better have your shit together right and better be quick and fast and concise right or anybody loses interest right so take that opportunity and make it happen so you wrote 79 i worked on um 79 episodes yes Mm -hmm. of seinfeld that's amazing well it really was you know, a once in a lifetime lightning in a bottle. Kind Did of you thing. know when you started that it was going to be what it was? When I finally got to the show, it wasn't the giant hit right, yet right. that it had become. It had just come off of not being almost renewed. Right. I don't think anybody did, but I think that's what the genius of the partnership of Larry David and, and Jerry Seinfeld is that they just wrote what made them laugh. Right. And that happened to be uh the sweet spot of what uh, people thought was good smart comedy and it was so great that some like the the uh korean ladies the The manicure manicure i mean because it's so from a woman's point of view yeah i always thought that the place that i went in new york ruby nails 80th (laughs) and lexington (laughs) that they were talking about me behind my back and you still get free i did until ruby's shop closed but god damn it until it closed i would go in there and get my free manicure oh carol yeah uh and then they used the real logo of ruby's um on the episode that's so amazing. Yeah. And the skinny mirrors at Barney's. Skinny mirrors at Barney's. Who hasn't, what woman hasn't looked in a mirror and right. thought this is a skinny mirror? Right. Um, after Seinfeld. Now, while you're doing Seinfeld, were you doing stand-up? Not as much, no. I'm pretty... Did you miss it? Um, Not really. You know, I'm a very um, monofocal focused person right i can't do a lot like, of things and at that's the same it also time. optometry monofocus very good thank you. hey thank good you. callback thank you um yeah i'm not one of those people that can do a million things so if i'm writing i'm writing and if i'm performing i'm kind of and do you performing. feel as satisfied um i am because uh each thing has its things right. i mean the thing about stand-up is it's exciting when it goes well, but, you know, the traveling and oh, when please. it doesn't go well. And I do still do get anxious before I perform. Right, right. Uh, dealing with that, that has its own thing. And then writing is a much more sedate lifestyle, more kind of civilized and I'm right. at home and um, that kind of thing. But then sometimes I get frustrated that I'm not performing. Right. But it's nice to have But both. you get to do both. Yeah. Now, um, after Seinfeld... Uh, you know, you are a very sought after writer. I mean, you write for the Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Most of them, I think, of this 21st century. Is I just that correct? did. This last one was my eighth time. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It was really good, by oh, the thank way. You. I love that opening um, with the black and white. This pa- The past. You know, they did that opening where they had the. Oh, oh Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jimmy's. Uh, Jimmy's guys came up with that. Um, oh, I meant I didn't like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're great. He has a really good yeah. team of people. Um, so, you know, you you do a lot of writing. You've now the um, what you call it show with uh, Henry Winkler. 
Yes, better late than never. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you have your hand in so much stuff. I do. I'm lucky right now. I'm in a really good phase. Right. What Am I ever going to get in that phase? <laughs> <laughs> Judy. So, But you never really pursued the writing like I did. I know. I have this addiction to being on stage. Mm-hmm. Do you, when you're not on stage, does it start to I want to creep you out? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I am... I swear, I think that I am a stand up con- like that is mm-hmm. me and a microphone. Like, nothing makes me. I still love it. I still, you know, and I think back to when I first started and I used to be laying on the couch half asleep and I have to go do a 12 30 <sighs> or right. a one o'clock spot. And now. You know, I'll be on the couch and I'll have to do a nine o'clock spot and yeah. I'm ex- as exhausted as I was. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm still doing it. But then I walk in that club and mm-hmm. I get on that and it's, I don't know what it is. Do you go on at Gotham? Yeah. And that's good too. Right? Yeah. Gotham's good. They're all, I being a comic in New York Yeah, is because you don't have to get in your car. You don't right. have to find a parking spot. Right. You and take a cab. Um, I do a lot of subway. I do the Via. What's that? Oh, it's a shad ride. Really? Yeah, four ninety five. Wow. Um, I do. You know, I take car services and stuff. I, Eastville is also another club I work. There's a lot of really good clubs. Wow. Yeah, like if you came back and were like, I'm yeah. giving it all up. I'm gonna. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Uh, I do feel old though. I think I'm one of the, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. oldest people who still goes out and does. Right. Sp- Margaret Smith used to call me a leopard because I. Oh, how many spots are you doing? <laughs> um, okay, so But you, it doesn't matter when you get on stage, if you're funny, you're funny. Right. Nobody cares. Right. How old you are. Right. Nah, I can't get a Netflix special. I can't I can't get a comedy special. Mm-hmm. I, last one I did was ten years ago. It's so I'm gonna do an album. But Oh that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Cause I feel like I also feel like every comic um complains after they do a netflix special that their materials eaten up and they can never do it again yeah but when you when i remember listening to comedy albums when i went to see that comic i wanted to see them do the bits that i heard Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and i think it is a listening art form too as well all right so you um are married to a woman i am you identified as straight most of your life i did until you until i met her and i didn't think i was gay right i mean I, lo- I had relationships with men. I had sex with men. You and- were married to a, a male. Yeah. We won't bring that I up. was. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but then I had this hankering to have an affair with a woman. I just like was like. Just- it's just so interesting that you didn't have the torch. Like I knew when I was like three. Mm-hmm. Something's. What's going on? I'm different. You know. Wow. And was in the closet and ha- had a bleeding peptic ulcer. I'm mean, like, I. I must have been so It was hard. horrible. The closet is the most painful to, to live your life like as a fraud. Right. Is it's so awful because you're a f- in fear that if anyone finds out your life is over yeah you know no i i really my heart goes out yeah. to you and people that had to live through that but it wasn't until i met Lori and had who my, is lovely by the way ladies is, and gentlemen yes, yes. And jewish um that um i knew i kissed her and i kind of knew i was gay. was it was it it was a different kind of kiss than it was different but it was more like um the emotional connection that we have with each other it was different than any right. guy that i'd ever gone out with right before. it just but you felt satisfied when you were with or that's all you knew you didn't think about it i can't believe your mother's a psychologist was a psychologist yeah. and you had no inkling i just i didn't that's so incredible yeah no you I, have um so you have a great relationship. She is a lovely. She's really sweet she and is. very pretty. And then you have a son, Bruno, mm-hmm. who's adorable. Thank you. Um, I would say you pretty much have it all. <laughs> I have a, things are very nice. You know, I'm happy that and as you are, you're married, right? No, we're not married. Oh, you're yet. not married. Oh, OK. She's so annoying. She's she's a therapist. So whenever you talked about your mother, like going right. into the cycle, it's like everything. I'm like, I don't want to process. I don't just can I just say something and you go okay, mm-hmm. let you know. Um, but we're no, we're not married, Elisa. But we will be eventually. 
Um, and so you have this wonderful, wonderful life. Now, you um, were on The Apprentice. Mm-hmm. Um, with the host of The Apprentice was um, is the president. He's now the president of the United, of the United States. States. But here's I, the thing. If I'm right. honest about that experience, you know, I could not be more 180 from who Donald Trump is as a president. Right. He so doesn't represent me, what my values are, right. what my beliefs are. When he get when he talks and he's so it just sounds like the biggest dummy. Right. Right. You know, it, it embarrasses me to be an American. Mm hmm. But I have to say, on my experience on The Apprentice, you know, he was very professional. Right. He played the game well. Right. He, um, I thought it was very fair when he went through things. He was right. like the 180 of who he is now on that show. Right. So, uh, you know, I wish I could say, oh, I can't stand him as president. And he was even worse. Right, it, right, right. He wasn't, you know. But this um, was also uh, in 2009. Um, but it is hard to believe that he's the president. And you got eliminated first. I did. Did it hurt? Yes, it did. Yeah. But so funny. Chuck LaBella, who is um was the talent guy then for NBC, and he called me to tell me that I was doing the show, and I was excited because I right. wanted to make a lot of money for my right. charity. It was at North Shore Animal League. I wanted to, you know, and I thought I'm going to play the game well. I'll be a real contender. Right, right. And I said, oh, great, I got the show. I said, you know, the only thing is I don't want to be that loser that's thrown off first. And it was like, then I got thrown <laughs> I off first. got, I got eliminated from Chopped um, All-Stars first. And what, it was like. What is Chopped All-Stars? So, you know, the show Chopped on the Food Network where you pick out, you know, you have, you have secret, you have a certain amount of time. They give you, you don't know what the ingredients are and you have to no, create. No, I don't know that. Oh show. my God. Okay. Well. You get a basket. You get the appetizer you, basket and then you right. get the dinner basket and dessert oh. basket so separately. I, d you know, I was on it. Johnny Weir, me, Layla Ali, and uh, 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 Joey Fatone. Okay. And um, the first basket was uh, chicken, breast. Yeah. Avocado. Kamuchi, kakuchi, some sort of Korean spice, <laughs> yeah, and chalk uh, and vanilla cupcakes, and you have to cr you have a certain amount of time to create an ap an appetizer. Right. So I grilled the chicken. I made guacamole with the Korean spice, and then I was like, oh fuck, I forgot to. What am I going to do with this stupid cupcake? Yeah, and I know now I should have taken the frosting and I should have added it to the guacamole to give it a sort of sweet thing. But I just, you know, breaded the chicken with the, I don't know and then I put it on the plates and meanwhile Johnny Weir is like I've never cooked a day in my life <laughs> I just I don't know what I'm doing but he he doesn't even season the chicken yeah and he puts it on this plate and he has flowers on the plate and the pl it looks like you know yeah just this beautiful presentation and me I'm cook for my kids I have like the, the chicken breast slobby fucking guacamole <laughs> so they're like oh your food tastes good and I lost on presentation oh. and I knew that they thought I was going to be in right. the round two because right. in the round two basket there was matzah. Oh, <laughs> my God. Isn't that awful? You and I would have made matzah bry, and I would have won. But Layla Ali won because she's, she's like her father. Like, you, there, you knew the minute you walked in. Right. There was no, she was going to do it. There's two things that I uh, also find fascinating about you. You're right. a life. And then let's wrap it up. And then we're. And then I have two questions after that that we ask. I can't believe you're the. I've never done a podcast where it's like, this isn't going on an All hour. Right, sorry. And, Half, a hour and a half. I mean, I'm come fine. on, Judy. I love you. I love you back, but come on. Really? <laughs> All right. Um, a, Weight Watchers lifetime member. Yes, I am. I love that about you. Do you? Yes, I love that. My mother, used, I used to have to go on Weight Watchers, and um, actually a friend of mine's mother was at the first Weight Watchers meeting oh ever my God. on Long Island. It's a great basement. program. Yes. In 2012, I lost 15 pounds, which to... Uh, it, you know, to me, you have to is be, like right. nothing. But yeah. to be a woman, you get that mm -hmm. it can be something. And I've kept it off since then. I go every month and, and I put myself on that scale and they weigh you. And it's the smartest thing that they ever do. They make you, you have to be weighed there once a month right. to keep your lifetime membership. And I love that about you. I love that you 
ex- physical exercise is very important. Yes. I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, TM, Transcendental Meditation. I do that as well. Now, I meditate. Okay, um, but not TM? Well, TM is where you have a mantra, correct? Yes. And it's given to you, correct? Right. I can't afford it. I heard it's really expensive. Is that <laughs> correct? Um, it, eh, you know... It's about $1,500, I think, but you can work things out with TM people where they will uh, assess your needs. Chakra? And, yeah. <laughs> no, they'll um, give you a break if you appeal to them. Do you, um, and you do it every day? I do it every day. How long? 20 minutes, twice a day. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you ever lot- skip? I, a lot, most times I just do it one time a day. Right. I do more of the five o'clock. That's right. not the prescribed program. Right. But that works for me. And it helps. And you definitely feel. I definitely feel a difference in life. And it helps with my positivity. I know. Judy. That's what I want to do. That's why I want to do it. It really helps with I that. I really do not want to turn into my mother who I've turned into. And even Oscars, uh, the, uh, I rarely met, you know. I, I missed it once this year, and it was Oscars night just because I right. got home and I was so exhausted. But if I don't do it every day, I feel it. Like right. I want to do it. Okay. I'm do- How do you find a TM person? It's completely easy. You okay. go to tm.org. Is that true? Seriously. And yeah. they'll walk you through the steps. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, we ask our guests two questions. Every- okay. All right. I think I know the answer to the first one. Um, have you ever been on antidepressants? We're very pro mental health, so okay. we, we always ask if anyone's ever used antidepressants. Well, just... here's the odd thing: for someone, I've been in therapy for a million yeah. years. Same. I've never taken antidepressants. I knew it! I knew it! Okay, Are you're you... not the only one. Okay, who else hasn't taken? Oh my God! There's a whole bunch. Do you remember? I can't remember so many uh, people. Hennessy would have, but there are so many people. Yeah. Who I'm like. Really? Are I you on it? Oh my God! I had a very bad clinical depression in 2010. I suffer from terrible, really? debilitating anxiety. I'm oh, like, wow. it's yeah, that's yeah. Um, but I am. I just what got off. Take? My, I'm now on Wellbutrin. Okay. Um, what effect? I've always wondered what kind of effect does an antidepressant well, I, have? Well, I felt. Um, well, it took a while to get the right cocktail. Um, it. Now that I'm off mm-hmm. the one that was really, I was on Paxil, um, I cry a lot more. Mm. Um, I, you know, I'm definitely more in touch, but I have no frustration tolerance. And I, um, I'm really anxious. I have really bad ADD that I work so hard in my brain. Like I meditate too, but like I, I'm like, okay, focus on this task. And like when all the other thoughts start coming in, right. shut up, shut up, shut up, shut. You know, I'm gonna do this, and, and so if if one thing happens, like, mommy, I'm like, ah! you know, my brain goes. Cr- it's really hard to. Mm, mm-hmm. So it kind of calms that down. Where I'm like, okay, it's okay. You where I don't react right. as much. Um, so, I it just sort of has a a, a numbing effect. I thought it was gonna make. I wasn't gonna be able to be funny anymore, but it didn't do that. Well, that's good. Now I just cry and, yeah, I'm anxious. I think anxious. TM is really, really going to be great for you. Really? I do. <laughs> it okay. really changes your life. Okay, I'm doing it. And your perspective and in so many I'm ways. going to TM.org. Okay. Um, and if you want help with, you know. Who to go to? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I love you. Uh, last question. What pisses you off? Like, what makes you so angry, crazy, like you can't like you know uh what pisses me up really it's a very simple answer it's just people acting like bores b o o r s <laughs> mm. like people throwing their gum in the street oh yeah i can't stand that or littering i when yeah. someone throws like a straw wrapper or the cover of their cigarette you know mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I, I i like it makes me crazy yeah people uh that kind of behavior not saying thank you when yes. someone opens a door for you or, right i'm um, just the simple very simple 
do you etiquette. ever um, say anything to those people? So, you know, I don't like to because it really doesn't get you anywhere. But when I open the door for someone, they don't say anything and they, you're welcome. Yeah, you know, I do. I do. That I kind say of stuff. Yeah, I, I can get um, pro. But, you know, it like I said, it doesn't really get you anywhere. Like I went to Starbucks today and there was a guy who had a baby and the baby started crying. And I get it when the baby starts crying. But he just like didn't pick the baby up or anything the baby just kept wailing right. at the starbucks and i wanted to go over and say pick, pick your baby right, up right right just leaving them in the right like, who doesn't know that right it, just leaving them right there in the stroller is not going to make them stop right. crying like pick your baby up. right but, you know to get into things with people is not a it's right. not a good area right and that's where we differ <laughs> <laughs> Lady. Judy, uh, Judy yeah. before you go, I went yeah. to TM.org, and it's just kind of funny what the connection is. There's a video from Good Morning America with Jerry Seinfeld on it. No, yes, because he does. He does the. Yeah. Uh, he's a big yeah. and he's a big proponent. He does it twice a day, all the right. time. Yeah. No, it's a. It's a. I'm doing it. I hate to say this because it sounds so trite, but it's a game changer. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, game changer in your life. Um, I don't know how to thank you. Wow. Oh, Judy. It really uh, like was a pleasure. This, even though it went too long, and I could probably go on for three more hours, um, I thank you so, so much. My pleasure. You know I adore you. Oh. So I sweet. do. Um, will you sign my book? Of course. All right, good. Yeah. Um, and everyone, get Carol's book, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Crying. Get it? Crying. Crying. By Carol Leifa. Uh, Do you have website? I do have a website. CarolLeifer.com. That's it. Uh, and people can go there and see what you're doing and mm -hmm. where you're working. Mm -hmm. And They thank can. You. Thank you. My pledge. And as we always say, so long! And uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in details.